interface manager. Now, uh, before I go into it, what interface manager does and uh, what problem does it solve? Um, like to share um, where interface manager have been used. So interface manager is um, code agnostic or unit for financial agnostic. This is this. Um, I know we are unit for financials consultancy, uh, but this tool itself. Um, yes, we are using with code of financial customers, uh, but it's this tool itself can work across different ERPs or procurement systems. So you can see here that we have um, done the integration using IM um, with the ERP tools, payroll, point of sale systems, and on the other side, imaging systems um, and applications like that. So it's um, just wanted to highlight because we um, I hear from customers the um, conception is that this is something to which just code of financial is not. So I want to clarify that upfront. So you can ask as many questions as you like, uh, if, even if you are not from Coda background. I just wanted to clear that up front. OK, so the problem. Um, so from my number of years working with them um, on customer sites, doing the integration um, with various applications, we have I've learned this, this interface manager being built ground up just to address these problems on your screen right now. Um, we have seen uh, on customer side where we go, we're trying to do the consultation around interfaces and around integration. We see that business users don't have access to their um, interfaces or they um, or they don't have skills to use them where they are deployed. For uh, that, that is understandable. Mostly, you know the business user like finance teams or procurement or billing teams who wants to um, run the interfaces or look at their logs, for example, schedule their jobs for that matter. So for them to know all the intricacies of the backend environment is uh, is demanding. Not everyone is um, business user are skilled to handle those kind of um, technologies. Just do all they want, very simple task run their interface, monitor the logs, and, and things like that. Well, what ends up happening? Um, that they, uh, either the IT team are very strict, they don't give them access, or they say, well, we are fed up, let's just give them access, which means they give them RDP access to the backend, which means then it's, everything is open to the business users, which is, again, not a very good practice. So this is the problem uh, we are trying to solve. So this is beneficial for both um, business users and the IT team. So they can give a, it's an web application. You are not giving them RDP access. So you can control what kind of um, access and what kind of interfaces um, customers shouldn't have access to. So to answer this problem, um, we have built up the tool called Interface Manager that um, give us the, the answer is Interface Manager. So this tool then allow us to, to fulfill all the business user requirements and the IT requirements for, for that matter. So I can give X using my Interface Manager, I can allow business user to access only their own interface. So you might have 10 interfaces deployed on the environment, but from team to team, they don't want to see or they should not be seeing each other's interfaces or running them because perhaps they don't understand them. So if you give them ID RDP access, normally what will happen is so if they are all on the same environment, I have access to everything, which is obviously not intended. And that's the reason, you know, IT perhaps will not like users to give access to the backend. With with IM, I can give access to an individual interface to an individual or a role on a role basis. So I can control the security. Um, we can set up, users themselves can set up these schedules or, or schedule interfaces um, if they want. You have um, another issue 
um, we come across is that mapping tables or interface configuration tables. There, um, users will not have access to those tables because that's sitting in the database or in the config file somewhere. So using IAM tool, what we can do is allow um, to give access to that specific table to a specific user. And not only that, we can also control as to which within the number of columns are available to you, which column user can change. It, it, that kind of granularity is being, is possible using IAM. So um, when interface runs, they can allow user to see the logs live and if that's so required if you are running uh, on demand. Moving on. <clears throat> now uh, interface, obviously you, you, all the code of financials users will, uh, or unit for financial should I say, will understand this screen. So we can allow, um, we have in interface manager, we have a functionality called, um, we call it one click. It's just so that people understand, especially from the IT background, this is like a single sign-on, but it's not single sign-on. What it does is that we, based on users access, we create a, IAM creates a, a login um, URL, which we can link to users dashboard. So what that allows us to do is to, um, as soon as a user involved and uh, login into Code of Financials, they can click on the, the URL and it will log them in directly into Interface Manager without a further login. It's just make things easier for the user and it, it, it just flows nicely for them as possible. All right. So once you have clicked on the main menu, let's say in Code of Financials or any other um, application for that matter, if dashboards are configurable, we can um, link interface manager directly onto your dash or user's dashboard. Now, once you log in, this is the page you will, the user will see. Now, on the left-hand side, you can see interfaces. Now, you, you will notice that there is admin settings in there. This is admin user uh, menu. Users, standard user will not see admin settings. So you will see interfaces, file browser, tables, admin set settings on the left. Now, when the interface is on the left-hand side panel selected, on the main page on the right, you will see all the interfaces configured for, for, uh, for that user. So if I have logged in as admin, I am configured to see these interface. They are not just appearing because what, whatever is available is being configured that what I can see. Only those interfaces will appear here, okay? Next tab, if you see after interfaces as interface, you will see the whole scheme in the, on the next page. So that's, I'll just move on to show you that page. So if you click on interface execution status, that's the screen you'll see. So whether user has on demand executed an interface or it was running through a scheduler, the logs appear here and you can the user can see when it was last run and what actually happened so you, it is possible to see from here and you can download user can download these logs to see the details as to what actually happened to the execution at that time and if the interface so you see three types of statuses here completed interrupted and failed there is another status which is not captured here, it's called executing if you have a long running interface, which turn, you know, takes half an hour, one hour whatsoever, you, when you log in here, you will see a executing status as well. So that you know, okay, that interface, there is a process um, um, up running, uh, running and not completed yet. Okay. Now here you can of course search, obviously as time goes, you will have loads of statuses here and loads of files you can search based on date based on interface name or statuses on the right hand side if you see 
And if you see there is a, a small icon for a refresh button there where uh, you can refresh as to to state to update the statuses of the interfaces. Okay, so before I go to this one, I just wanted to um, mention another thing. So you, you see on the right hand side, scheduler status. There is a separate page um, down in the in the presentation, but just to complete this page here. Uh, if you go onto the scheduler status page, you will also see how many interfaces are scheduled to run. That's that possible as well. So that's up here here, but I'll explain later in the page in the presentation. Now file browser functionality. Um, this is to answer the, the issue or the problem where user says, well, I need to manipulate these files. I need to move them around between folder to folder to, to run these. So for example, point of sale system drop the files into a certain area. Someone has to go in either in the IT team or the business user, they manipulate, they, main, they move the files from directories into a right folder before it can be processed. For that, generally you need either IT team or a business user will go in using RDP access to um, put the files into the right directory before it can be processed. With interface manager, is, RDP access is not required. We will configure this functionality we call file browser, which is basically running at the back end. Where the folder we have allowed, so let's say I have been allowed to see a certain folder on a back end. I can only see as my use as I log in, I will only see that specific folder, nothing else. And you can set up as many folders, file browsers as you like. So. So instead of me having access to all my user can see, I have access to only a specific folder. Here I can move the files around, I can delete them, I can upload them and I can download. You might be saying, well, what else can user upload into this uh, using this functionality? I know IT um, guys will be thinking, what's the security? Can I upload malware? No, you can't. It will. It has a security in there where it will only allow certain types of files to be uploaded, and that's configurable. So you can't upload everything. Only the uh, file extensions you will allow that can be uploaded here. You can you can point the files, download them, move them, and and almost exactly the same as you can do from Windows Explorer without actually being on physically on the machine. That's that's the file browser functionality. You might have some questions, we'll take them as um, to a stand, but we can revisit this page if, if required. Now, another requirement I've seen over the years uh, with the users is that um, they want to maintain their mapping tables or staging tables for that matter. And generally, you need a SQL skills or you need direct access to the database. It becomes difficult for users to manage it. In Interface Manager, we have uh, developed a functionality where if we just point a, a, a table uh, to the Interface Manager, it dynamically renders it. So what is the screen you're seeing here is just a a configuration table, which I've uh, just configured in the IM. And when the user clicks onto the tables menu, it shows you number of tables available for me to see. And as soon as I click a table name, it appears here dynamically. This key, the values, the columns, and the values. Now what you see on the top right hand corner, you see delete rows, add new row. This is depends on the security I have been given. I have the security uh, permissions to add data or delete data from here, but you may not. You might just have view access. If I have an edit access, 
um, IoT team can restrict me to say I can just change the data in the key values, which I will do perhaps in the interface configuration side of things because I don't want users to be creating a new key name on the left hand side of the table here. What matters is on the right hand side, I should be able to change. I want to change, you know, um, company code from C1DPL to CSUK, for example. So I should be allowed to change that. I can just, it's simply a web page. User go and click on the row uh, that the dialog box appears and you change the value and save. So all of this uh, function you get as part of IAM without doing any um, development. It's just, just point to the SQL table and it will render that table to the user. Okay, now it also has a search functionality. So it's search based on text you type in, regardless of which column and where it exists in the table. So if I, if I type in uh, company code text, wherever company code exists, all those rows will appear on your view. So it has a good, um, a decent uh, search functionality as well. Right now, uh, if you see, we have an admin. So we have just described the table section. Now we have R in the admin settings. This obviously the super user might have access to this or the IT team themselves. So you see here table configuration, interfaces, file browsers, user management, process scheduler, JCI extension, and JCDB master. So I'll, I'll briefly dis and describe each one of them. So tables con configuration, as the name suggests. So if you select as an administrator, if I select that option, tables configuration, it will give me list of all the tables, database tables available within that database schema where I have access to. Right. So right now this is pointing to uh, interface manager's own database. So if I have access, then it will give me all the tables available physically on the on the database. I can go in and select. Yeah, I need interface configuration table. I'll pick that up, configure the roles and permissions, which columns, whether I have a view access, delete, update. I'll configure all that. I'm not showing all these detailed screens, but just to keep things uh, a little bit simple here, but we can organize a one-to-one -one, uh, session if, if, if anyone require. So doing that, as soon as I define that table, um, table configuration for the user, it will then appear for that user when you click tables on the left-hand side. That starts showing up there right now it might not be available for them because it's not being configured. So that's table configuration. Interfaces is, as 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 what you saw in the first um, page or slide, all the interfaces configured for for my for myself will up will are configured using this option interfaces. As soon as I select uh, click on interfaces option, it gives me a what kind of interface is this? There are two types of interfaces you can configure. One is using developed using our our extensions, or or it may be just a batch file. So you it, you have developed it yourself, and you can integrate your own interface uh, into IM. It doesn't have to be developed by us. So you might have some pre which we have done for other customers where they have pre existing interfaces and they purchase interface manager and we have configured the existing interfaces using this functionality. So as long as we can call them using batch file, it, it can be integrated here. So it doesn't have to be Java, it can be .NET, it could be anything. As long as it's, it's working on that backend system, we can integrate it here. File browser, as I described, this is you can have set up as many file browsers as you like, depending on the users, uh, what they need to access for. So all you need is source and target um, path, which exists uh, where interface manager is deployed. 
Next is user management. This is pretty simple. You just need to, uh, you have number of users available in the system and the roles. So you might create a role for finance team, billing team, procurement team, and then you, you create those kind of roles. So you can, they can might share number of interfaces. Uh, so billing have their own interfaces. You, you get the idea. So you can define permission roles uh, um, rather than doing for each and every user, you can do department wise for that matter. Next is process scheduler. This is this is similar similar to a Windows scheduler, but it's all based on this web application. You don't need to be on the backend machine to be creating these process schedulers. You can you can select the process scheduler and it will go and select which scheduler when you want to run, how many times during the day you need to run all the usual stuff using process scheduler and who actually can see it as well. The permissions. JCI extension that, as I said, this is this is built. Um, this is for tech, um, technical purposes where we if we have built those extensions using our own APIs, we configure using JCI extension. Otherwise, uh, yes, this is not required. Database master is you can create as many database masters um, uh, as you like, so it will appear when you click on the tables on the left hand side, you will get to choose which database you want to go into. You can have look at multiple databases. Using this option so you can configure them. OK, so these are all the options under administration settings. Right, so we have I uh, means so far um, interface manager has been used in multiple industries where from shipping to finance to insurance to to um, um, restaurants and publishing companies these are uh, some of our uh, customers where in, who are using interface manager so i'm that's all for me if 